The question is, the velocity of efflux of a liquid for a height of water column in an open tank through a small orifice at the bottom of the tank does not depend on density of liquid, height of the liquid column above the orifice, acceleration due to gravity or none of these. All right. So there are two very important things here. One, it is an open tank. And number two, it is a small orifice. So let's see what is the consequence of that. Okay, since this is an open tank, the pressure at the surface of the liquid is going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure. And since the orifice is exposed to the atmosphere, the pressure here also is going to be P0, which is the atmospheric pressure. So the pressure at the orifice and the pressure at the surface of the liquid is the same. This is assumption number one or the consequence of our assumption that this is an open tank. Very important. Number two, the area of the orifice, it's a small orifice. So area of the orifice is much, much less than the area of the cross section of the vessel. Okay. So under these two assumptions only, Torricelli's law is applicable. And it says that the velocity of efflux would be under root of 2gh. Okay. So naturally, the velocity is going to depend on the acceleration due to gravity and on h, which is the height of the liquid column above the orifice. Okay. But be very careful that if the two criteria that the pressure at the surface as well as at the orifice is not same and that the area of the orifice is not small under these conditions, Torricelli's law will not be applicable and we will have to find speed of reflux using Bernoulli's equation. All right. But for now, since these assumptions are valid, then the speed of reflux is going to be independent of the density of the liquid. And hence, my option A is going to be the correct option. All right, let's move forward. The question is, an open water tank standing on the floor has two small holes punched in the vertical wall, one above the other. The holes are 2.4 centimeter and 7.6 centimeter above the floor. If the jets of water from the holes hit the floor at the same point, then the height of the water in the tank is. All right, so two holes are punched and the water jet that comes out hits the floor at the same point, which means that the horizontal range for both of them is going to be the same. We have to find out what is the height of the liquid column in the vessel. Now, two things are already given. One, it is an open vessel, which means the pressure at the surface and the pressure at the holes is going to be the same, which means criterion one is met. And second, the holes have a area which is very, very small compared to the cross section of the vessel, which means Torricelli's law is valid here and the speed of efflux can be safely assumed to be under root of 2gh. And under these assumptions, we also calculated what is the range. So range is equal to 2 into under root of small h into capital H minus small h. Okay. So just to refresh your memory, what is small h? Small h is the depth below the liquid surface. So naturally, what is h minus h? h minus h is the height of the orifice above the bottom of the vessel. All right. So the product of these two things under root multiplied by two gives me the range. Okay. Now what I want to do here is I want to replace small h by capital H minus small h. All right. Let's replace this and see what happens. So essentially, physically, what it means is that now I am taking another hole, which is at a depth of h minus h. And hence, it will be at a height of h from the bottom of the vessel. All right, this is what I want to do. And in this situation, I want to find the range. Okay, so naturally, what was h now is h minus h. And that is the replacement I am doing. Okay, so range in this case would be equal to 2 into under root of h is replaced by h minus h multiplied by capital H minus and again, small h is replaced by h minus h. All right, what do I get? I get 2 into under root of h into h minus h. And amazingly, this is exactly equal to the range. Okay, now be very careful and understand this, that if two holes, one is at a depth of h from the top, and another hole, which is at a height h from the bottom, if this is the situation, then the range for both of 
these jets is going to be exactly the same. All right, which means that if two holes and one of the hole is at the same depth as the other hole is at a particular height at the same height from the bottom of the vessel, then the range is going to be the same. All right. This means that in this current situation, this hole is at a height h1 from the bottom and they have the same range which means this hole has to be at a depth h1 as well and this is going to be 2.4 centimeter. So this means that the total height is going to be h1 plus h2 and if we add them all up we are going to get h is equal to 10 centimeter and that is going to be my answer. All right, now let's have a look at the options. So option A is going to be the right option. The question is, the level of water in an open tank is five meter high. A small hole of area one centimeter square is made at the bottom of the tank. The rate of leakage of water from the hole is, all right. So this hole, number one, it's a small hole. Number two, it's an open tank, which means that the speed of efflux is given by v is equal to under root of 2gh okay this we can easily deduce from the assumptions okay now this hole is at a depth of 5 meter the area of the hole is 1 centimeter square okay what we have to find out is the volumetric flow rate so when we say the rate of leakage we basically means the volume per unit time of liquid coming out of the hole Okay, so volumetric flow rate, we know it very well, is equal to the velocity multiplied by the area of cross section. All right, this is something we know very well. So all we need to do is substitute, find the answer. So what is V? V is under root of 2GH multiplied by area of cross section. So this becomes 2, G is 10 and what is H? H is 5. And area of cross section is 1 centimeter square or I can write it as 10 to the power minus 4 meter square. So from here 2 into 5 is 10, 100 under root is 10 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 4 and hence this becomes 10 to the power minus 3 and obviously the unit is going to be meter cube per second. Alright, let's have a look at the options. So option A is going to be the right answer. The question is, a vessel with open top, when full of water, takes 10 minutes to be emptied through a small orifice at its bottom. How much time will it take to be emptied when it is half filled? All right. Now, when it is completely filled and the water is leaking out, then it takes 10 minutes. Okay. Now, two things are already given to us. One, it's an open vessel, which means pressure at the surface as well as the orifice is the same. And two, the orifice is small or the hole is small. Okay, under these assumptions, V is equal to under root 2GH. And what we find, and when we find what is the time taken for the liquid to completely leak out of the vessel, we find it is equal to A upon small a. So what is capital A? Capital A is the area of the cross section of the vessel small a is the area of the hole h is the height of the liquid column and g obviously is acceleration due to gravity okay so can i say that t1 the time it takes for the complete water to leak out will be equal to a upon a into under root of 2h upon g is that correct okay now what we have done is now if this were h now, if this were h, now what we are considering is half the height only, so which is h by 2. Now, in this case, the time taken, so I'm writing that as t, should be equal to a upon a. Now, everything is the same. The only thing is that the height is half now and divided by g. All right. So, if I divide t upon t1, then what I'm going to get is, so a by a, a by a is going to get cancelled everything is going to get cancelled. The only thing which is going to remain is 1 upon root 2. All right, that's very easy to see. So t will come out to be t1 divided by root 2, which means 10 minute 
divided by root 2 and the value of root 2 is 1.414 and when we calculate this we are going to get t is equal to approximately 7 minutes all right and that should be my answer let's have a look at the options so option b is going to be the correct option the question is the area of two small holes a and b are 2a and a respectively the holes are at depths h by 3 and 2h by 3 from the surface of water the vessel has an open top find the correct options okay this is multiple option correct and what are the options the velocity of e flux at hole b is two times the velocity of e flux at hole a the velocity of e flux at hole b is root two times the velocity of e flux at hole a the discharge is same through both the holes the discharge through hole a is root two times the discharge through hole b okay so basically two things we have to find out what is the relationship between the velocity of e flux and what is the relationship between the flow rate okay now it's an open tank okay it's an open top which means that the pressure at the hole and pressure at the surface is the same and also the holes are small which means i can safely use v is equal to under root of 2 gh all right that is allowed at under these assumptions all right perfect so let's find out what is the speed of efflux for hole a that is 2 g and h is the depth below the surface which is going to be h by 3 all right now what is vb vb is going to be 2 g and the depth in this case is 2 h by 3 okay so can i say this is equal to root 2 times under root of 2 g h by 3 okay now what is this this is nothing but va which means vb is equal to root 2 times of va all right so first relationship we have found out next we have to find out what we have to find out the relationship between volumetric flow rate and what is volumetric flow rate volumetric flow rate is a times v that's it okay so volumetric flow rate at a is going to be the speed at a multiplied by the area of cross section and how much is that that is 2a and the volumetric flow rate at b is going to be vb multiplied by what is the area of cross section a all right so in this case vb can be substituted by root 2 va so i'm going to do the substitution i'm going to write root 2 va multiplied by small a okay now this is va multiplied by small a and then just to tweak it a little bit what how i'm going to write it is root 2 multiplied by root 2 times v a into small a all right it's just manipulating the terms a little bit so that you clearly understand the relationship here so what have we found out we have found out that v a the volumetric flow rate at a is going to be root 2 times the volumetric flow rate at b hence we have deduced both the relationships now let's have a look at the options And hence, the correct option is going to be option B and option D.